Hey English Tenors, Mr. Gunderson and welcome to Distance Learning. Today is Monday, March 30th and yes, we are doing this. Um, so uh, this weekend I had made the, uh, this English Distance Learning Information uh, folder and there's a video that talked about kind of the expectations of what distance learning is going to be and whatnot. Um, so go ahead, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, go ahead and watch that at your convenience. Uh, there's also this contact information. This is all of my contact information. Um, please sign up for the correct hour for Remind. I will be using that quite a bit as far as sending you, uh, sending you just quick uh, bits of information, let, letting you know that uh, assignments or folders or chapters are ready to, be, to, to go. Um, now, just like in uh, regular class, I used uh, this class calendar quite a bit. And here is the April 2020 distance learning calendar for the month. It has a breakdown of the entire month, each week, and each day. What is due, what you're doing each day, what's due, when it's due, and all that good stuff. And then, of course, over here is the upcoming. Okay, so that upcoming tab on your iPad will be key because that's going to give you a little snapshot of each day. All right, so... Today, what we're going to be talking about is, you know, right at right when we were leaving school for to get ready for distance learning, we were just about to start of mice and men. And so, what I want to talk to you about today is just that of mice and men, and uh, kind of just uh, do an introduction to that. All right, so here's here's uh, of mice and men by John Steinbeck, one of the greatest American novels ever written. All right, so John Steinbeck, some information. We had talked a lot about John Steinbeck um, kind of before we went on this little break here. He was born in 1902 in Salinas, California, decided to become a professional writer at age 14. He learned about ranch life as a teen working in the summers. He wrote 16 novels um, of Mice and Men was his seventh book, and he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Uh, Steinbeck's America. Steinbeck lived through the Great Depression, a time of economic hardship brought on by the stock market failure. This was added to by the natural disaster of the Dust Bowl, a catastrophic erosion of soil followed by a series of droughts which caused crop failure on a massive scale. Thousands of farms were abandoned, leaving families homeless and in need of work. Many people migrated to California, which was less affected by the climate change, or I'm sorry, climate damage but equally hit hard by the Depression, making work scarce. It is against this backdrop that many of Steinbeck's novels were set, including Of Mice and Men. And uh, we're going to do this. Okay. Uh, so here's a, some information, a quick video on John Steinbeck, his biography. We're going to skip that. Of Mice and Men is John Steinbeck's tragic novella of the struggle to survive in the Depression era of America. George and his slow-witted companion Lenny are two migrant workers seeking ranch work while trying to save for their own slice of the American dream, a small farm of their own. While Lenny's superior strength makes him a good worker, his craving for the comfort of soft things and his lack of control over his impulses and his physical power contribute to a tale filled with tragedy. Now, one thing that I want to talk just real quick about is the American dream. They they have this dream, and I think we all ever you know when America was was first built and designed by the founding fathers, it was all based on this American dream, and it's all different for everybody. You know, for some people, it's it's to own a home and have a job and family and all that stuff. For someone else, it might be different. Um, for George and Lenny, it was their dream just to own a small farm, just to have something of their own. Okay, so keep that always in mind. The title's meaning. The no uh, novel is structured like a play with six static scenes in which the characters come and go. The reader never follows the characters when they leave the clearing, the bunkhouse, or the barn. We remain in one place and the action comes to us. Now, keeping that in mind, each chapter, there's six chapters, each chapter is like a play. Each chapter stays in one spot. You don't move around. Now, characters come and go, okay, but we stay in one spot. That's really important to remember. Steinbeck has designed these chapters and designed this play, or designed the book, 
like that for a reason. And every chapter starts off with a lot of description. Steinbeck is masterful at using description and really the five senses to bring up that setting alive. And then the action starts happening. Um, the book's title comes from a Robert Burns poem, To a Mouse on Turning Up Her Nest with a Plow. And part of it, this is just an excerpt of it, The best laid schemes, O mice and men, gang after glay, and lee us not but grief and pain for promised joy. So what that means is down here in, parent in the parentheses, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry or wrong or off course and leave us nothing but grief and pain instead of promised joy. That's, so we got to think of that. The best plans go wrong and leave us with pain. In the poem, the mouse had prepared for winter, but found its nest overturned by the plow, an instrument that knew nothing of the mouse's hopes and plans. George and Lenny have their own dreams, ultimately destroyed by circumstances no one could have predicted. The novel contrasts the natural world, mice, with the social world, men, but reveals how in reality both animal and man are struggling to the same end, a place of safety. Sadly, the best laid plans of mice and men are destined to come to nothing as the harsh realities of life get in the way. Now, that sounds very depressing. It sounds very sad and all that. And um, this book is a tragedy. Um, but at the same time, and as we go through this book, I will make the argument that this is very much a very beautiful love story. Um, and I'll, I'll plead my case and I'll, I'll make that to you as we go through the book and, and talk about it. Um, but I hope that you'll, you'll kind of see that as well. Oh, we're going to skip that. Here's a quick video about the depression we're going to skip. How important is friendship in a person's life? Um, now, if we were doing this in class, I would ask you about that. How important is friendship? And again, this story is very much about friendship. It's very much about loneliness. It's very much about the American dream, all kinds of those things. Uh, would you be, what would you be willing to do for your closest friend? Again, this is a huge part of this story. Such a huge part. What would you be willing to do for your closest friend? And I think all of us you know, would, would be willing to do all kinds of things for our friends. Now, let's you know, talk about some of our characters. George Milton, he is the protector of Lenny and tries to keep him out of trouble. He's resentful of Lenny at times because he's always having to take care of him. Lenny is a drag on George's life. George is smart and quick, uh, with a quick mind and wit. He dreams of owning his own farm. And then here we have Lenny Small, um, kind of an oxymoron because Lenny is a big, strong man, often doesn't realize his strength. So the name Small is an oxymoron because he's a big, strong guy. He's simple-minded, mentally disabled, likes the comfort of soft things, difficult controlling his impulses, and wants to tend rabbits on George's farm. This is a, a video clip of them talking about the dream. And I just got to show it to you. Come on, do it. Tell like you done before. Please, please, please. Get a kick out of that, don't you? Okay. I will. Guys like us that work on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world. They ain't got no family and they don't belong no place. They got nothing to look ahead to. But do, do, not us, do tell uh, about us. Well, we ain't like that. We got a future. We got, we got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. If them other guys gets in jail, they can rot for all anybody cares. But not us, George, because I, you see, I got you to look after me, but then you got me to look after But, but George, tell about how it's going to be. But someday, we're going to have us a little house and a couple of acres. And the cow. Pig. pig and chicken, and chicken. we're going to live off the padded land do it, and yeah. have rabbits. And have or, rabbits. Do, yeah. but, do it tell what we got in the garden. Okay. And we tell about the rabbits in winter and about Wait. the stove and, and uh, uh, how 
hope that the cream was on the milk. Yeah. Like you do. Oh, well, why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. Do it, no. Do it, no. I'm not the same. That in, when I tell it, that's not the same. Go tell um, what, what, uh, uh, how I get to tend the rabbit. <laughs> We're going to have a big vegetable patch. We're going to have a rabbit right, hutch. Right. And down in the flat, we'll have a little Don't field of alfalfa, alfalfa for the rabbit. And, and I get to tend the rabbits. Yeah, you get to tend the rabbits when it rains in the winter. We'll just say hell with going to work. And we'll just build a fire in the stove and we'll just sit there and we'll listen to the rain. Um. Like I said before, that's their American dream. That's their dream. They want that place of their own so bad. Um, they don't want to have to just keep scraping by and all of that. So, um, All right, another main character in the story, his name is Slim. He's a mule driver on the ranch and in a position of authority, sensitive and intelligent. He understands George and Lenny's relationship. He's a good judge of character. You have Candy. He's a crippled old ranch hand. Cleans out the bunkhouse, has an old smelly dog. The other workers complain about. George, uh, joins George and Lenny in their dream of owning a farm. Now, as we talk, and we'll get there, when you got to really pay attention to Candy and his dog. They're both old. They're both crippled. And they both, you know, you have to look at what they kind of symbolize, okay? And we'll talk about that later. Um, there's another clip of Candy and his dog. We're going to skip that. Here is Curly. Here is our, um, our antagonist. Curly is the ranch boss's son. He's short, arrogant, and aggressive. He's a former boxer who likes to fight. He picks fights with bigger guys. Who's the big guy in the story? It's Lenny. He neglects his wife, yet gets extremely jealous if anyone talks to her. And speaking of the wife, Curly's wife unhappily married to Curly, who orders her to stay in the house, dresses provocatively, and hangs around the bunkhouse and ranch workers. He's extremely lonely and craves attention. Now these two things right down here. Curly's wife. Now again, we talked about this, is that Curly's wife was, I mean, John Steinbeck named her Curly's wife for a reason. He didn't give her a name because women were just, they didn't have that place. And so he really wanted, I think Steinbeck really wanted to kind of Get, get it across to readers that she was just there for no other reason other than basically to serve Curly. But she, the idea of she's very lonely and by dressing provocatively, flirting, she's craving that attention that she never got. And here's a clip about Curly's wife. We're going to skip that. Setting. Pay close attention to the detail Steinbeck uses in describing the setting in chapter one. And really the detail that he uses in describing the setting for every chapter. Many of Steinbeck's novels take place in the Salinas River Valley and surrounding areas. It's the regionalism that we talked way at the beginning. Okay. Themes. Loneliness is a big one. Okay. Loneliness. This is a, t this is a time. The D Great Depression was a time of lots and lots of loneliness. Dreams and hopes, we've talked about that. Friendship, yes, friendship is huge, being accepted. And in this time, George and Lenny are extremely special. They have each other. They're, they have this friendship, and a lot of people don't have that. And then social acceptance is another big one, theme to pay attention to. Symbols, remember a symbol is a regular inanimate object that takes on a deeper meaning. So an American flag, you know, means... Freedom, a cross, religion, a rose means love. Symbols to look for in mice and men, rabbits. Candy's dog is a big symbol. The dream farm is a huge symbol. The clearing by the river, Lenny's puppy. These are all symbols in this story. So what's coming up? Life of a migrant worker during the Great Depression. What is regionalism? Controversies surround. We've all talked about that. So that's the end of that. So let's go back here, and again, how this uh, this story, how you'll be reading it is laid out here. It's basically a chapter a week. So you'll be in chapter 1, March 30th to April 3rd, and in there will be, uh, you'll have a notes assignment to do. So notes, 
first hour, make sure you do a first hour, six hour. Here, do the notes first. That tells you what's coming up in the chapter. <clears throat> then you have the, the reading. So now you can either do it this way. Um, you can do the guided reading itself here um, and answer the questions that are in, you know, that are attached to that. Or if you click on this, see the Ed Puzzle? If you click on this, this is the chapter where the, story, the, the chapter is read to you. You follow along on the screen, and then there's 15 questions embedded in the Ed Puzzle, and they're all multiple choice. You just go through and click through them and answer the questions that way. And once you get all done with everything, on that Friday you'll have a quiz. On April 3rd, you'll have a quiz on the first chapter. And that's about it. Now, there will be a video. I'm going to put a, attach a video here. Every chapter is going to have a video that of me just, it's only going to, it's going to be short, brief, just me of what to pay attention to in this, in each chapter. Okay, I'm going to try to keep them as brief as possible. I know this one was kind of a long video. Um, but yeah, so that's what we have for, for each chapter. All right, that's all I have. Folks, I cannot stress this enough. Last thing I'm going to say is I cannot stress this enough is that you have to, without me being there, please, Watch the instructional videos for each chapter. Pay attention to the directions. Do Make sure that you get things done when you're supposed to get them done and stay on track. If you fall behind, fall behind, fall behind, it's going to be that much harder to get caught up. All right, English 10, that's all I got for you, and we will talk to you soon.